Good morning. It's time for Daily Chapel at the LCMS International Center in St. Louis. The text is Jeremiah chapter 26, verses 1 through 16. The Reverend Robert Wurst is preaching. The broadcast of chapel is underwritten by LCMS International Mission and Ministry to the Armed Forces. A reading from the Holy Prophet Jeremiah, the 26th chapter. In the beginning of the reign of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, this word came from the Lord. Thus says the Lord, Stand in the court of the Lord's house and speak to all the cities of Judah that come to worship in the house of the Lord all the words that I command you to speak to them. Do not hold back a word. It may be that they will listen and everyone turn from his evil way that I may relent of the disaster that I intend to do them to them because of their evil deeds. You shall say to them, Thus says the Lord, If you will not listen to me to walk in my law that I have set before you, and to listen to the words of my servants the prophets whom I send to you urgently, though you have not listened, then I will make this house like Shiloh, and I will make this city a curse for all the nations of the earth. The priests and the prophets and all the people heard Jeremiah speaking these words in the house of the Lord. And when Jeremiah had finished speaking, all that the Lord had commanded him to speak to all the people, then the priests and the prophets and all the people laid hold of him, saying, You shall die. Why have you prophesied in the name of the Lord, saying, This house shall be like Shiloh, and this city shall be desolate without inhabitant? And all the people gathered around Jeremiah in the house of the Lord. When the officials of Judah heard these things, they came up from the king's house to the house of the Lord, and took their seat in the entry of the new gate of the house of the Lord. Then the priests and the prophets said to the officials and to all the people, This man deserves the sentence of death, because he has prophesied against this city, as you have heard with your own ears. Then Jeremiah spoke to all the officials and all the people, saying, The Lord sent me to prophesy against this house and this city all the words you have heard. Now therefore mend your ways and your deeds, and obey the voice of the Lord your God. And the Lord will relent of the disaster that he has pronounced against you. But as for me, behold, I am in your hands. Do with me as seems good and right to you. Only know for certain that if you put me to death, you will bring innocent blood upon yourselves and upon this city and its inhabitants. For in truth the Lord sent me to you to speak all these words in your ears. Then the officials and all the people said to the priests and the prophets, This man does not deserve the sentence of death, for he has spoken to us in the name of the Lord our God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A second reading from the epistle to Saint, from St. Saint Peter, chapter 1. The Holy Apostle writes, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are being guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials, so that the tested genuineness of your faith more precious than gold that perishes though it is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Though you have not seen him, you love him. Though you do not now see him, you believe in him and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory, obtaining the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the shadows, under the cloud of sin, the lines between right and wrong, good and evil, true and false, grow very conveniently hazy for us. The light has been shown in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it, but the darkness did hate the light. And he, the light of the world, hated by all the world, loved them in return. He loved this dark, cruel world perfectly without cause or condition, seemingly without reason or sense, 
He loved it and gave His life for it. And yet the world hated Him, seized Him, abused, and crucified Him for it. They hated Him because He was perfect love. It was too perfect, too extreme, too brilliant to behold. It didn't fit in, and therefore it had to be put away. So it is that the world hates those who carry that light, that perfect love, the fruit of that good sacrifice, even he himself inside themselves. For they carry it not just for themselves, but also for the life of the world. Being a Christian never means being right with God in your heart, in private or secretly. It means that we have joy and the peace of our salvation, that we are willing and eager to divulge this good news of God's love for man in Christ Jesus. And thus the world hates the Christians who bear the light, who seek to change the world by offering it life, even as it hated Christ. The Christians are sheep of the Good Shepherd. The hateful world are the wolves. And so the life of Jesus Christ, his death and resurrection, is always lived out in his disciples. And the life and the work of Jesus continues. The word of the Lord endures forever and it spreads to the ends of the earth. And wherever it goes, the martyrs are put to death. And thus, Saints Simon and Jude, who were apostles and then martyrs, were sent by Jesus Christ to proclaim the good news of God's love to a world who loves to kill, that is embroiled in self-absorption and in hate. But in their suffering, that torture and sorrow they endured, beyond that persecution, they found perfect joy and peace. What they preached to others was also for them. Jesus paid also for their sins. He washed them clean. He made them his own. His mercy birthed them anew to a living hope through his resurrection and made them heirs by grace to an inheritance which is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading. They knew great difficulty and hatred on this earth, but they knew even better that it would not last, that there is for those who trust in Christ a salvation to be revealed in the last time. And tested by fire, their faith was refined. It was strengthened by power from on high, it was drawn closer to its source and its fuel. It was made perfect. And in life and in death, Jesus was their all. And so it continues to this day. The word of the Lord endures forever, and it spreads to the ends of the earth, and the martyrs continue to be put to death. Confessors are mocked and ridiculed. The world drives on in its blind lust and hatred of the truth with its vain worship of self and success. Some martyrs, though, bleed on the inside, their reputations being destroyed, their names slandered and betrayed. They die a thousand deaths as former friends and companions turn their backs on them to preserve themselves. They unify themselves in cowardly hatred with the world. They exchange the truth for the glimmering lie of worldly honor and acceptance to be popular and not be spoken against. What comfort then is there for these modern martyrs, these quiet men of conviction and truth, even you in your hostile workplaces, neighborhoods, and homes? Just this you must know. It will not last. Beyond the persecution and the suffering, after the shallow mocking, then shall the salvation and the honor and the glory be revealed. And this, you must know that you belong to a long line of noble saints, including apostles and prophets, housewives and soldiers. You are God's own beloved, his precious people. He loves you enough to chastise you, but he will not let you go. He keeps you close to himself through this suffering. He perfects your faith in it. And your faith, refined by fires great and small, will go the distance, for he has promised that to you. For you, by grace and mercy for Christ's sake, are God's own, his very beloved. You are his baptized. And being hated by men is better any day than being caressed and loved by the devil. Saints Simon and Jude gave their lives in the service of Christ. They died in a foreign land 
so that foreign people like us might know Jesus. They did not love their lives unto death, and now they have their reward. For blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from henceforth, and soon the angels will sing that also of you. But in the meantime, go to your pastors, to the altars that they serve, and eat what they have to give to you, food for suffering saints, the body and blood of Christ, the forgiveness of your sins, the medicine of immortality, and that will sustain, strengthen, and comfort you in the fires to come. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for joining us for chapel. Today we pray for the Reverend Roger and Amy James who served the Lord in the Philippines. The broadcast of chapel is underwritten by LCMS International Mission and Ministry to the Armed Forces. To learn more about LCMS International Mission and Ministry to the Armed Forces, visit kfuo.org chapel.